Thank you for joining us today. We are going to have a quick demonstration of the 2020 1099 NEC and 1099 miscellaneous process prior to the release of the form update from within Atrix. The first thing we are going to do today is show you what it's going to look like once you install 2021 Service Pack 1 or 2020 Service Pack 3. These are going to be the only two updates that will allow you to have the option to print the 1099 NEC form and have the updated 1099 miscellaneous. We're going to start by going to Accounts Payable, Vendors, and then 1099 Processing. As you will see, you have a new 1099 processing screen. You will now have a drop down box for the 1099 form type. You're going to see miscellaneous or 1099 NEC. The other thing that comes into play when you're printing the 1099 NEC and 1099 miscellaneous is you'll see new box options for the vendors under AP Vendors Maintain Vendors. When you go into the other field, you will see this now says 1099 miscellaneous NEC and you will have a drop down to choose either the box one of the NEC or the additional miscellaneous boxes. For this case we're going to make sure that this vendor is a 1099 NEC vendor and then we're also going to ensure that there is a total for the amount of 1099 payments. Now that we've verified our vendors are set up I um, want to take a look at the global vendor change. So if you have a number of vendors that need to change their box number, now by default anybody that was sent as a 1099 miscellaneous box 7 in a previous version will be converted to a 1099 NEC box 1. But if you have any other changes that need to be made on a global basis, the global vendor change was also updated to include this information. So for data to change, you can choose 1099 box. Uh, original value, you can choose whatever the original value was. And then you can choose the new value that you would want to assign it to. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the 1099 process. So first we're gonna look at the 1099 NEC. When you go to run this after December 20th, there's two components to the update. The first component, which is the Service Pack 1 for 2021 or Service Pack 3 for 2020, allows that option in the dropdown to select the 1099 miscellaneous. The second component is the form update that comes from Enhanced Tax Reporting. That will be released on or around December 20th of this year. When it is available, you're going to choose the automatic update. It's going to scan for what updates are available and then you're going to hit next to take that update. As always, if you receive any errors during the update process, please turn off your antivirus software and then redo the update process again. Antivirus softwares have a tendency to interfere with the update process, so usually you just need to put that on pause and perform the update and it will allow you to continue. Once the update is complete, it will bring up the company setup screen. In this case, we're going to say no thanks, start processing my 1099s. You're going to confirm your EIN number. You're also going to confirm if you use multiple data files or not. You're going to ensure that your company information is correct. In this case, we need to have the address line actually display the address and we're going to hit next. You're going to fill out your tax preparer type and you're going to confirm the formatting of your state tax items or any other tax item listed. You're going to answer the data verification questions. You're going to confirm how you'd like your recipient identification numbers to appear and once that's complete it's going to come up to the enhanced tax reporting grid. In this case our vendor is an FEIN so we're not going to have a recipient name, we're going to have the, the identification number, the company name, the address, and then over here you'll see the box one amount. So we're going to hit next to continue with the data verification and that's just checking the formatting to make sure that all the necessary boxes have been completed. 
you're going to get the notification if you want to do the complete e-file service. And then you'll have the options of whether you want to do the complete e-filing or if you would like to print your own. Complete e-filing service is something that's handled by Atrix. If you choose that option, it does go off into the Atrix website. We'll have you create a login or enter your login information, and then you will be charged from there. And they do the whole process for you. They email, they print, and they complete they complete that submission for you. In this case, we're just going to show the printing options. We're going to choose other option. Notice when you select the print my recipient 1099 copies that the e-file options will automatically be selected. In this case, I'm not going to e-file, so I'm going to deselect those options. And I'm going to select to print the federal and print the state copies of the 1099s. I'm going to hit next. It's going to again have a suggestion about the uh, e-file service and it's going to choose your states then it's going to show a little recap of what's going to print. The first thing that's going to display is the federal copy of the 1099 NEC. As you go to print this copy notice it's going to tell you to insert the official red 1099 federal paper forms. This is going to be the forms that you purchased from either the office supply store or from sagechecksandforms.com. You'll notice down at the bottom it does say the 1099 NEC form and then you'll continue with your processing. Once complete, you'll hit next step. In this case, it's going to print your federal 1096. Notice it checks the box that this is a 1099 NEC. Each type of 1099 will require its own 1096 form. When we go to hit print final, it's going to again tell you you need to insert the red 1096 federal paper and then you can continue with your printing. The next copy to be printed will be the state tax copy of the 1099 NEC. This will be printed on plain uh, paper. If you notice that when you click print final it will tell you what if there is a form requirement it will tell you what type of paper you need to place into the printer. The next thing we are going to print is the recipient copy of the 1099s. You'll notice they have a little bit different layout here. And when you go to click print final, it's going to tell you you need to insert your four part perforated 1099 paper. These are either completely blank or they have instructions on the back. I'm going to go ahead and cancel that out and hit your next step. And as you'll notice with the 1099 NEC, it looks exactly the same as the 1099 uh, miscellaneous. It's just going to have the new options for the 1099 NEC. We're going to have the 1096 for the 1099 NEC, a state copy. You would go ahead and print that out, and then you would hit next. And here are the instructions for the recipient. So if you have the forms that don't have the instructions on the back, you can print this to submit to, with your 1099 NEC. And this copy next is your copy. Uh, you can print these onto plain paper. Notice there's no form requirements. So you can print this copy directly onto plain paper for your records. Once complete, you're going to come up with the uh, preparer screen. It's going to give you your options to either reprint or correct the 1099 NEC. And then when it comes to the 1099 miscellaneous, it's going to be the same options as you've always had. It's just going to instead pull the 1099 miscellaneous form when you select that drop down. That's going to complete our short tutorial today on the 1099 NEC and 1099 miscellaneous changes for 2020. Just as a reminder, you will need to have 2021 Service Pack 1, which does not include any payroll tax updates, or 2020 Service Pack 3, which also does not include any payroll tax updates, installed in order to process your 2020 1099 NEC and 2020 1099 miscellaneous. Thank you.